in the United States, this black-white problem, mm. like you've got in the United States, you have got nowhere in the Muslim countries. Where? Nowhere. The Algerians say, the, the, the Arabic countries say, yeah. castrated the slaves. And that's oh, why really? this problem can never come, yeah? yeah. Mm. There's no, no, no race conflict in that sense, mm. because um, they couldn't don't breed. We will have to invade, it's coming. Mm. The way we see it, it's coming. It's just a fence separates mm. them from owning or from using that grass. And the way they are looking at white people these days, the whites themselves are saying, the eyes are saying, time is up. Time is up. Johann is a descendant of one of the roughly 30,000 Germans that stayed in Namibia after German colonization ended in 1915. This white population live in enclaves of relative luxury, fencing out the majority black population from land they claim is theirs. So am I suddenly, just because of my color, then as a reverse racism, uh, am I not a Namibian? You know? Mm. I mean, where do you want to start? Do you yeah. want to say all the white people are not Africans? Yeah, but yeah. We, 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 my, my grandfathers came here in 1904, and my mother was born here already. I feel totally Namibian, so I, 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 to me, I'm a Namibian. He feels Namibian, but Germans here are sealed off from most Namibians socially. And despite having been here for generations, they usually don't speak any of the indigenous languages. If I meet a young guy here on the farm, I talk to him English, mm. because I knew he had English at school. Mm. If I talk to an older guy, I talk Afrikaans. Okay, but you don't speak Oshivambo, I guess. <laughs> no, only, only a few words. There could not be a greater contrast between whites here, who own up to 50% of agricultural land, but they make up less than 1% of the population. They enjoy one of the highest standards of living in the world, but despite gaining independence from apartheid South Africa in 1990, the majority of black Namibians remain amongst the poorest. At many traffic lights in the capital, Windhoek, groups of young people wait at the roadside in the hope of getting picked up to do odd jobs, often for white patrons and little pay. We are looking for jobs. Yeah, we are looking just for, for working and removing glass and basic job. Every day, every morning, you wake up four o'clock. You spend maybe four days without anybody, without picking up you. You spend the, 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 whole, the whole week. Life is not easy. It's not easy. It's truly a country in which people can very easily live in different worlds. And that is because the, the apartheid design of society, not only spatial but also socially, um, kind of prepared for that. You have our cities, you look at towns, how they are divided. It's classical apartheid style. On the edges of every big city in Namibia, you have these sprawling townships where people are living with limited access to water, limited sanitation, no flushing toilets, and barely any electricity. And this is where you really feel that so much of the population of Namibia are living just in the shadows. Workers on the other end of town, they only encounter white people as bosses, essentially, as supervisors or managers. Socially, the, the old apartheid structure is replicating itself. And we're sitting here now, 28 years after independence. Outside of Swakopmund, a city described as a little Germany in the desert, lies the vast shantytown named the Democratic Resettlement Community, known as the DRC. Hunger here is an urgent problem. Some of the, the people, kids, they took out human placenters and they went to cook it. They had a dump site. Human placenta, which is just coming from the hospital. See here. A lot of kids went to drink this HIV uh, positive blood at the dump site. Kids was drinking this. That's blood. It's blood, it's human blood. It's coming from uh, uh, laboratories for testing people. Poverty and inequality in Namibia are inextricably linked to land, and 44% of Namibian soil is commercially owned. That's approximately 39 million hectares, bigger than the whole of Germany. This land is still mostly in the hands of whites. 
Elsewhere in Africa, Zimbabwe is often scorned by the West for seizing land from white settlers. And in a South Africa still reeling from the legacy of apartheid, calls for radical change are getting louder. Forward to expropriation of land without compensation, forward. Forward to expropriation of land without compensation, forward. Here in Namibia, tensions are just as stark. If we have to take over, that's the first option. We're not going to be interested in uh, saving the rhinos and all these funny things that, that, that happens. Our number one program is going to be land. What are we talking in terms of the land here, the farm, uh, size-wise? 14,000 hectares. 14,000 hectares. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, okay. You know how much is it? You know, you no. most probably... Maybe people have got a, 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 a different... <laughs> understanding field, for, for size. Yeah. 14,000 hectares is like 14,000 soccer fields. And then the people will think, oh, it's a big farm and so on. Yes, it is big. But if there's no rainfall, you know, if I've got a smaller farm and you don't get the rain on this small area, then you're stuck. Hmm. 15,000 football stadium. Even just to say, even just to say, it's not difficult for that guy. It's greed. That's why we get very angry and saying that, that the best solution is for ultimately for us to occupy those ones. Mostly this farm, it's belonging to the German guys. Uh, the owner, it's a German from this side and the other side. Is it, is it normal to have fences cutting off land like it, this? They are, no, uh, it's not uh, normal, but uh, because this land, it's brought by the Germans during the colonial time when they came here. So they, they, they protect their things, it's why they started putting fence. A lot of Namibia's commercial land is surrounded by fences to keep animals in and people out. We visited a growing Damara community who exist in a kind of no man's land. The place is really a triangle. It's a triangle that has a complete surrounding of commercial farms. And on the one side, it is a railroad. But then you have a tarred road. And in this 150 to 200 hectares is a community of 2,000 plus people squeezed in. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 Germans here stick to their own. But once a year, they present themselves during Carnival, a tradition that hits Germany every spring. The parade is like a showcase of their community, their spectators, the poor black population. It's the German blood, the tradition, that's where we all get crazy and live off. Brings people together and everyone's happy-go-lucky, come join, there's no stress, no nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Get Two all the way from Smugglebond. This festival is just another example of how friendly everyone is here and everyone coming together just to enjoy a few beers. No matter what the politics say, no matter what life says, to see the best in everything right now. You need to take the mickey out of yourself sometimes because life is unfair. That's bottom line. Away from the show of Carnival, I asked Johan why he thinks Namibia is one of the most unequal societies in the world. Today, if you look into society, you say, yeah, I mean, look, you say the inequality, obviously the equality is between, between black and white because the traditional white family got maybe two kids or three mm. and the average uh, black family, they've got 
about six children. It's going slowly down, you know, slowly. But if, you, if your population growth rate is higher than your economic growth rate, then you go into poverty. There's no question about it. What happened in Zimbabwe is he threw out the white farmers. Zambia was not self-sufficient in food production. Then they brought the white farmers into Zambia. They knew how to make food production on large-scale farming methods. They, they just got the skill. I don't know how to explain it, but it's simply a fact of the day. And now Zambia is self-sufficient again. This kind of racism goes deep and is often proudly on show. Almost 100,000 German tourists visit Namibia each year. And among the souvenirs on sale to them, I was horrified to find Nazi memorabilia. In Germany, this would land the sellers in jail. Is there a lot of neo-Nazi? Is there yeah, neo -Nazi? There, there, there are a lot here. Yeah. There are a lot. There are a lot. I mean, Even during the, the German carnival, they used to parade wearing the, the swat stickers and uh, the KKK out, outfits and, and, and painting black faces, insulting our people and calling us baboons.